What is up, much fam? I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and today I'm at London Jewelers Oculus Boutique in downtown New York City, taking a look at one, two, three, four, five, six different pieces from Jeje Le Colt's Master Control line. It's gonna be awesome. I am wearing my vintage Rolex, reference 1601 from 1977. Gorgeous blue dial, steel oyster case, white gold bezel. You guys know all the specs. Uh, love this piece. Love all day just, really. Um, maybe not, you know, the most popular watch out there, but dollar for dollar, crazy uh, value. So, um, before we get into these watches, let's talk about JLC history a little bit. JLC was founded in 1833, which makes it older than Patek Philippe, AP, and Rolex. They were an independent brand until Richemont acquired them in 2000. Now, looking at the Richemont catalog, they're top tier beside Langenzona and Vacheron Constantin. They're not as prestigious or as expensive as those two brands, but in you know watch collector circles, they are looked at uh, with great admiration. They're actually referred to as the watchmaker's watch, meaning their chops in mechanical development and finishing and even design are on a level greater than their price point and even their uh, street cred. My first memory of the JLC brand goes back at least 15 years, my dad was given an Atmos, uh, which is a uh, JLC desk clock that is actually powered um, not by winding or by any movement, but by changes in temperature and atmospheric pressure. Now I know this, um, but at the time, I remember just, you know, it always had a very prominent position in my household and no one knew how it worked, <laughs> you know? So as a little kid, I was like, wow, this thing looks really great, um, but what is it? And my mom was like, I don't know, it's expensive, your father got it, you know, so anyway, JLC. So enough background, now let's get into these watches. We are used to hearing about and talking about reversos, um, but like I mentioned, today we are doing a, a different collection, a collection with a lot of variation, um, the Master Control. So I think that it's, it's great to start off with one of the more complicated models. This is their Ultra Thin Reserve de Marche. There are two examples in steel, both are here, one with a uh, pretty brilliant blue dial and the other one in silver. This reference comes in at 39 millimeters in diameter um, and with a price tag of 8,850 um, bucks. Let's try it on. I think it wears super well. When it comes to dress watches, you know, things that are flat, dial heavy, um, as opposed to being broken up by a bezel. Uh, sports watches with bezels usually wear a little bit smaller, um, but dress watches with a lot of dial can just wear like dinner plates. This at 39 millimeters, even though I'm used to 36 and 37, is awesome. Um, it's definitely modern, you wouldn't mistake it for a vintage watch, uh, but it does not protrude off of my wrist. In fact, it looks maybe damn perfect on my seven inch wrist. And the dial configuration, while technically asymmetrical, given that the date subdial and the power reserve subdial are not the same thing, um, it's still balanced, and that's impressive. The crown on these watches, as well as one of the references we'll talk about a little bit later, is a kind of small, Anna and I noticed that before, so it kind of does feel a little bit weird. I don't know if it looks weird. I don't think it does, but but it is small, which is of note. In the small details, like the light beveling, actually actually pretty broad beveling of the stainless steel lugs, uh, like the way that the uh, hour markers are, while strong and sharp, still kind of conservative, um, and the way the hands are finished. This watch, I think, is taken to the next level. I think this is a great watch, a, a really solid buy under nine grand. Um, I am struggling to find a brand and model that does what this does as well for nine grand. I, I, don't, think, I don't think there's one. 
Comment down below if you can think of one. Next is the Master Control Date. This one also comes in at 39 millimeters. I think JLC gets that 39 millimeters is a sweet spot. And with a retail tag of 63.50. This watch is definitely more sterile uh, than the Reserve de Marche. Um, it's more conservative, the, the bezel is wider. Definitely the most conservative watch on the table. I don't wanna call it boring or farty, but it's definitely conservative. Um, I personally like a little bit more, I don't know, uh, strong decision in style. Um, and this is more in the middle, which is probably great for many of you out there. As you would have imagined by the name, this watch just features the uh, time and date. So three hands and a date window at three. The hands are lovely. I think they're the same hands from the Reserve de Marche. Actually, throughout the collection, there are all these beautiful, um, elongated Dauphine hands uh, that are faceted. Really nice. This watch has definitely your dial. Ed, it's Ed. Right Say hi. Oh. Who's Ed? It's YouTube. Oh, wait. <laughs> Come on, say hi to YouTube. Ed is the manager here at London Jewelers Oculus location. Hello, guys. My man. <laughs> This watch has been overshadowed by the newer addition to this collection, which is JLC's Sector Dial Master Control Date. Um, like I was saying before, that watch is a great example of making a decision in design, going a certain way and going heavy. Now, there is nothing wrong with conservative design like we have here. Um, I'm a fan of a classic, boring Brooks Brothers Oxford Cloth button down. I just happen to like my watches um, with a little bit more you know, design uh, um, decision. The sector dial is beautiful. And for whatever reason, $500 cheaper, um, crazy. Moving on, we have three more Master Control Ultra Thin models. Um, let's start with just the one with date. So this watch is in function the same thing as this watch, just in ultra thin. JLC doesn't tell you the, the thickness of the watches, uh, which is really annoying. Um, if I were to eyeball it, I would say that this watch is eight and a half millimeters thick, um, and maybe this being under two millimeters. I could be wrong, but I think I'm, I'm pretty damn accurate. So the problem I have with this watch is, especially next to the other two watches I'm about to talk about from the same collection, it looks too large, I think, because of the date. The date is poorly executed. I think that the date window here is kind of small. It doesn't lay flat with the dial. It looks like it was an afterthought, because it probably was. Um, and because of that, it does ruin the watch for me. It's still great value, it's a great timepiece, but from a design point of view, and design's very important to me, I think the JLC did drop the ball, but, this next model, which is the ultra th uh, Master Control Ultra Thin Moon Phase, this is well executed. Same dimensions, but instead of a very small date window taking up the bottom half of, of the dial, you've got a beautifully executed uh, date as well as uh, moon phase. Now we're talking. This watch looks busier, but it's still super classy. Again, 39 millimeters in diameter, wow. That looks great. This is, this is maybe the best watch on the table. Um, and, in, and in black, it's, it's maybe even more beautiful. This exact piece comes in at basically right on par with the Reserve de Marche. You can just pick which complication you like. Is it Power Reserve or is it Moon Phase? Um, the dial on this is wild uh, on the Reserve de Marche, but I would probably go with the Moon Phase. It's just even more classic. It's probably also a little bit more formal. Um, I love automatique, which they spell with the, the Q, the U, and the E. Obviously, it's French. I just like that. I like that JLC, you know, once you write automatic, it, it becomes a, a watch you are, you know, marketing to a specific, you know, country. Um, although it would be probably bought by everyone around the world, it's still now in a, in a language that is not native to the watch. Whereas if you make it just French, it's just JLC. It's, it's, it's how JLC writes, writes things, right? Because they're, they're a Swiss company. Um, I like that. I do. 
and in black, it's wild. This watch is perfect. Again, 39 millimeters fine, but 39 millimeters of this watch in black makes it look smaller. Um, so it fits better on my wrist. It's more casual. The moon phase is still blue, but the way the blue and the black look together is crazy. Um, uh, the way the text and everything pops off is uh, very bold. I've considered this watch myself on multiple occasions. Again, the price point is very good. Um, geez, that's a great watch. That's a great watch. So that's it. The Master Control Collection is a, not hidden, but not very talked about gem in the watch world. Um, if you're looking to buy something that is not a steel sports watch, if you're looking to buy something that's a little bit more classic, check out this line. I love that they offer these watches in steel. It would be more traditional to offer them in precious metals, like white, gold, platinum, yellow, rose, um, which they also do. Um, but that would take it to a different level of, of price, and to me that's unnecessary. Uh, the steel, even though steel is inherently a sporty material, when it's executed like this, with class and thinness, there's nothing casual about it. It's just more affordable, and I'm all on that train. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to the London Jewelers team for hosting us for this episode. If you guys are interested in taking a look at something from the JLC catalog, or even from IWC or Tag Heuer or uh, Tudor, email London Jewelers at watchinfo at londonjewelers.com. They are an incredible team. They've become some of our best friends in the watch industry. Um, and you definitely will not regret uh, using them for your watch purchasing needs. We don't need this stuff. We just really like it. Anyway, talk to you guys soon. I snuck upstairs with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, pretty incredible watches that I have a lot to say about. Um, new watches that are either really innovative or thought-provoking um, or maybe super valuable dollar for dollar that I want you all to hear about. So let's get into it.